Welcome back to the Gear Bunker. My name is Eric, and today we're going to look at these Chinese diesel heaters. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Gear Bunker Garage. I don't know if that's what we're going to call it, but that's the first time I've used it. So maybe that sticks. Gear Bunker Garage. Anyways, if you're like me and you live up in a northern climate, it is currently 18 degrees outside. It's the middle of January and I've pretty much winterized my FJ Cruiser because I usually don't do any camping in the winter, mainly because of the temperatures. So kind of bummed. I'd like to, I've been reading a lot of people out there using these Chinese diesel heaters. And I say Chinese diesel heaters because these are kind of a knockoff of the Wabasto heater that is a higher end, about a thousand dollar unit. This whole self-contained all-in-one diesel heater comes straight from China and it is about 140 bucks. So I couldn't really pass it up, didn't have much to lose. Figured I'd give it a shot. If it works, it might allow me to get out in the winter and do a little more camping. So my, the purpose of this video is just to kind of show you what it is. And tonight I'm probably gonna pull the FJ out. It's supposed to be about 18 degrees tonight for the low and just kind of park out there in the driveway and get this thing running and see how it is up in the tent. I'm just gonna stay close to home in case I've got any fine tuning or adjusting or if the thing just quits on me, I can just walk back in. So that is the plan. This is an all-in-one unit, which basically the upper portion here is a one gallon diesel tank. And the lower portion, the lower half of this is the heat exchanger. So the reason that these are better than using like a buddy heater up in your tent is all of the combustion that takes place in this is outside of the tent. All it's doing is venting hot air up into the tent from down here. I plan to set it up. I've got a little bracket that I'm gonna show you that I use uh, as a step on this uh, back tire. And it's gonna keep this up off the ground and a little closer to the tent. So I don't need as much piping to get up there. So a couple of the quick modifications I made on this was adding this three inch galvanized elbow. This just allows me to kind of point the air where, I, where I'm gonna want. And what I've already found is it's a very easy way to direct this air. So this is gonna be sitting here. Ultimately the air is gonna be flowing up through here and up into the tent. So having this immediate 90 degree bend in a nice hard galvanized elbow is a lot better than hooking this directly onto it and having it kink and be super sharp and this stuff's gonna get really hot because the, the air is hottest as it comes out here and this is much more durable than this ductwork. So I zip screwed this onto the outlet. The inlet is just on the other side here and it just breathes ambient air from outside, allows it to flow through the heat exchanger and exhaust out here. Whereas the combustion portion of this thing takes place on the bottom. Right here, this black hose comes from this little air muffler down here and into the bottom. This is the intake side and this open hole right here is the exhaust side. So all of the combustion intake and exhaust takes place outside the, uh, the tent. This is the exhaust pipe that I will hook onto the bottom. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Uh, but for right now, I, I think I just need to get this thing fired up and uh, tested before I take it out tonight. I'll have obviously more video on that. What it came with was this three inch kind of aluminized bendy pipe for the exhaust. Well, this is how long it is. It's not really gonna, get up to the tent. I don't know what this is for. Maybe like if you're in a shop or a, or if you have it in a trailer or something, you could just use this to direct the air, but I'm actually trying to go about six feet up into my tent. So I've already looked at a couple different options. This is a pretty rigid pipe that I found at Home Depot. And it's, it's a possibility for connecting onto here and bringing it up to the tent. One of the downsides is as I was pulling on this to extend it, it kind of, got away from me and started falling apart. So I have my doubts on whether I'm gonna be able to extend this and keep putting it back over and over and over to store in the vehicle. So this is an option, might not be the best option. I also grabbed just this foil duct 
uh, I think you use it on bathroom exhaust vent fans. So that's another option. I could duct tape that on there and pull it up, but I've already noticed that a few times that I've stuck it over here, it is starting to rip this foil here. So not sure on durability on this either. The last option that I came up with, and it was a recommendation from a friend, is this PVC coated dryer vent. The good side is it seems way more durable. I put the hose clamp on it, fastened it down, and I had this thing test running and it worked pretty well. The downside of this is stowability. It's like a slinky. It's gonna be hard for me to store this thing because as you get it, it just keeps, uh, so what you're left with is something not as convenient as something like this. So that's still in the works. I gotta figure out what works best. So the, the front of this Chinese diesel heater has an LCD panel here. Figuring out how it works wasn't all that hard. It was pretty self-explanatory. This particular model came with a nice little remote too. I put a piece of magnetic tape on the back so it will stay with my unit when it is stored in the back of the vehicle. But the nice thing about this is it pairs via Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi? Bluetooth. I think it's Wi-Fi. Either way, as soon as you turn this on, it pairs with the head unit, and then I can go upstairs in the tent and control it on, off, and turn up the heat and turn down the heat. So that's a sweet feature. This thing runs off 12 volt because it's made for the automotive industry. So I basically just have a cord coming out of this with a 12 volt uh, plug on it. And I'm gonna, I've got options. I can run this plug inside the vehicle through this door and plug into an outlet that I have mounted back here. Or I can use something like this, a portable battery, like this Goal Zero that I can just plug in here. From what I've read, this holds a gallon of diesel and I'm probably, you know, if I run it for six to eight hours overnight, it's probably gonna take a, a half to two thirds of the onboard fuel. So, a gallon of fuel in this is more than enough from what I've read so far. So I'm gonna show you how I plan to set it up on the FJ. I, this is an older purchase that I made when I was using my Tundra for overlanding and it's just a, it's like a truck step that fits over the tire. And it's really been, you know, designed to be stepped on to get up and access stuff on the roof. I haven't been using that lately. I've just been stepping on my rock sliders and actually stepping on the tire itself. And now that this tent's mounted on the FJ instead of the truck, I just open the tailgate and everything opens from the back. So it was a completely different setup from what I had been using. So this really hasn't been used at all. So when I was thinking about what, how I was gonna mount it, I figured that would be a good option. So I'm basically just going to Set it here. Let me take a closer look. Basically, this is just gonna set on here. I've got a couple of bolts with wing nuts so I can fasten it because I do not want this thing tipping over in the wind. And the exhaust piece, which is this guy, I actually cut a hole down here where this is gonna come up through and mount. So this will be directing the exhaust gas down and away from the unit. And this is the intake right here. And the 12 volt on the back. So the setup's gonna look very similar to what I have here, just a little more secure. And then obviously I'm gonna affix one of these many vent hoses onto the end here. And I'm probably gonna run it right up right up through this corner here. Cause when I have this awning open, I have a little void right here. It's about three or four inches. So it's gonna be perfect. If I've got this awning open, which is a 270, it comes all the way around to the back. That will leave me with this little void here that I can get up and go into the back door of the roof nest once that's open. So for now, I am just going to 
get these vehicles moved around and get this thing set up and ready for tonight. And I'll have more to report from inside the tent. So stay tuned. Well, as I was getting this thing kind of prepped for tonight, I already found that I can probably rule this rigid pipe out because as I was tightening it, it already split. So that is gonna be a no-go. All right, I'm setting up the diesel heater for my first night outdoors. I went really far. I went all the way to my driveway. So like I was saying before, that's the stand that I'm using that mounts to the tire. And I've got the 12 volt going into the door, which is actually plugged into an outlet inside. So it's gonna be running off the car battery. The exhaust is mounted under here. Intake coming down here and underneath into the intake port. The exhaust is going right there. I've got my galvanized elbow on here and my heater duct fastened down and that is routed up into the door there of the roof nest falcon. And I will show you what I got going on inside so far. I haven't started this up yet, but still figuring this out so I've just got the hose coming up through that back window there and just kind of hanging on by a bungee cord so I'm gonna I'm gonna fire this thing up and let it warm up for a bit I go grab my sleeping bag and pillow and then probably come out here and see how the night goes all right I just turned it on and it kind of goes through a startup procedure on its own um, warms up the glow plug gets the fan going starts pumping fuel into it and then it, uh, it kind of goes full blast for a little bit before it kind of backs down once it's warmed up and at that point i can use that little remote control that came with it to adjust the fuel flow and i can do that from up in the tent which is nice so I'm gonna let it do its thing and grab my, my sleeping gear. I've had this thing running for a few minutes now. And uh, I'm gonna show you some of the outlet temperatures here close to the, the diesel heater. I've got a uh, Milwaukee laser temperature gauge. You can see that that is 190 degrees right there. And as we move up about 170 degrees there about 150 degrees there obviously there's no insulation in that pipe so it's going to cool off as it climbs up into the tent but seriously 150 degrees right as it's coming into the tent i've got to dial this thing back down to a low setting and uh I think we're gonna have a problem managing how much heat there is up there because it's not a not a very big spot or very very voluminous space. So there's a good chance it's gonna be boiling up there. So I'm gonna turn this thing down and then go climb up there and see how it is. So the cool thing is I've got this little remote and I can turn down the heat obviously remotely. The range is good, it works all the way up in the tank, but I just want to confirm that this thing is turning itself down. I'm going to go down to probably the lowest setting, and all you're changing on here is the frequency of the fuel pump. So I'm at 1.9 hertz, 1.8, and it goes down to 1.3. I'm gonna turn it down to 1.5 and leave it there for a sec. Right, now that I'm up in this hot box, holy crap, it is not gonna be a problem camping in the winter as long as this thing runs through the night, which is kind of the reason I'm testing it out here in my driveway before I go, you know, out exploring and then have this thing crop out halfway through the night. So just not troubleshooting, but just proving the theory. So outlet temp is 113 114 degrees or at least that's that's what it's reading right there 
and on the opposite side of the tent. I'm getting 86 degrees up there in this corner. It's 50 degrees. So by the corners, it's still pretty cool. 54 degrees. Up high, though, you can see the temperature go up. It's pretty darn warm in here. I'm just gonna probably be sleeping on top of this 15 degree sleeping bag that I brought. We'll see. I'll see you in the morning. I'll tell you. It's about 6.30 in the morning and um, I slept great. It is plenty warm in here. Uh, I took the, I took a couple of readings In the upper part of the tent is in the 70s. Well, it looks like my GoPro kind of ran out of batteries there this morning when I was up in the tent. But um, I will say that uh, for 150 bucks, these Chinese diesel heaters are worth a try. If you have any intention of going outside um, this time of year and do some camping, I encourage you to try it out. They are pretty intuitive. They're not too difficult to figure out and just takes a little uh, innovation to get kind of uh, figure out how you're going to get the air up into your particular tent. Mine was I probably have an extra 20 bucks in material uh, on top of the cost of the diesel heater itself between you know this elbow and I kind of upgraded the hose clamps. The ones from China are kind of pieces of crap so I upgraded stuff like that. And I'm contemplating actually using this muffler that came with it, because last night you could hear hear the air whooshing out of here, uh, the exhaust. So I'll probably try that next time and see how that goes. But for the most part, I kind of like this thing. It looks like an old computer CPU, but um, having the all-in-one, I think, is the way to go. This fits right behind my seat, my passenger seat in the FJ. And I even have room for this stair step thing that I put it on back there too. So if you're uh, if you're looking at getting out this winter, I'd say give one a shot. They're all over Amazon and eBay. I'll put the link to the one I purchased uh, on from Amazon down in the description. So take a peek at that and keep tuning into the gear bunker. Hit that little subscribe button down there if you could, if you want uh, more information and then go ahead and hit that little bell too and you'll be notified every time we come up with a new video. So I will hopefully see you guys out on the trail. Uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll see you next time.